So here we are again, another great walking adventure. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the old phrase, be still and know that I am the Lord, comes out of scripture here. But we're going to be talking about in regard to careers, vocations, that sort of thing. The situation is in a person's life that uh, when they're young especially, maybe they're uh, uh, 18 or they're, they're 24 or they're basically a young person and they're thinking about looking for a, a path in life, a path that they can take and build their future and they don't know what that path is going to be. They don't know how to go from from one point to another and, and they don't know what the vision for their life is or or what their destination is supposed to be. Maybe they don't know why why they're here. And, and, uh, and especially when people graduate from high school. And so of course, uh, you know, we need to look at talents. We need to look at, uh, you know, situations where where different people have different uh, uh, interests and, and different skills and, and different abilities and and uh, different uh, uh, ambitions and whatnot and and uh, try to get an idea how things are going to go. Uh, I know that uh, when the scripture says, "Be still and know that I am the Lord," there's a lot of confidence in that. That. Um, no matter what happens, uh, you know, God is in control and we should basically rest our, our assurance in the fact that, uh, you know, God is in control and uh, that's where, you know, we pray the Lord's Prayer and, uh, you know, on earth as is in heaven, it gives us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, our sins. We forgive those who sin against us and lead us not to temptation, deliver us from evil. Uh, for thine is the kingdom, power, and glory forever and ever. Amen. And, uh, you know, this whole idea, his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that, uh, that kingdom come, will be done. Uh, very, very empowered powerful very important you know we want to do those things that glorify God and ideally those things that glorify God the best you know I know that uh, there are people that uh, you know they uh, they find sometimes runners find that uh, you know when they're in the race and and they're they're you know, winning the medal that um, you know, they find the Spirit of God upon them they they believe and and uh, you know that uh, that God is has sort of had that purpose in them for their life that they would be the the best runner and win the race I don't know I'm not going to say one way or another but what I will tell you here what I will tell you here is that uh, it can be difficult you know i know in my life for example i went to high school and and uh i remember i i, I went to high school we had a, a huge basement in the high school and that whole basement i mean this is a big high school had hundreds of students and that whole basement was one big shop i mean so you had a metal shop and you had a wood shop and you had like drafting rooms in the basement and this area where I live was considered the hardware capital of the world uh, and more so in the past but you had a lot of machines from like the 50s I had a four-year woodworking program in high school you know like there were there was a, a plane and there were different types of uh, sanders i mean some real real impressive industrial equipment that table saws radial arm saws uh, pretty much every hand tool you can imagine for woodworking and that's not to include the metal shop next door the metal shop had even more stuff i mean you know but we had uh, wood lays and metal shop had metal lays and 
and uh, we could do all kinds of amazing stuff in there and, and uh, I built some amazing stuff in, in the four-year woodworking program I had in high school but when I graduated from high school all the uh, manufacturing really started dying out like I graduated in 1998 there in two, year 2000 a little bit after that that's when the, the manufacturers around town were were really starting to close and and uh, close or, or go bankrupt or or do something like that and they were they were bailing out of the community and so like the situation was that people just didn't use machinery that much anymore and uh, not around here at least of, of any kind and it's not that my woodworking education had anything to do with the manufacturing around town because it had little to do with that but it had a lot to do with with uh, uh, things like tables chairs you know things that would be furniture quality uh, products and uh, i can tell you that uh, all that stuff is it's not made around here i mean there might be some amish people that that make that kind of stuff but it's not it's not something that's made around here and uh, uh you know these days we get a lot of our our goods from china i mean you might find some some furniture stores that might sell furniture but I mean, there's not a lot of furniture companies. Uh, it's not like there are hundreds of them or something like that, or some guy down the street that can be making furniture and and you can buy it and, and it could be economical uh, and make good business sense to do that. Because it, it, it may not make good business sense to do that. And uh, there's a lot of cost. There's a lot of cost in labor in a uh, post-industrial area and then there's a lot of cost in your your equipment and everything else and and so like some stuff just doesn't make economic sense you know it, it's it's uh that's why that's why things come from china a lot of times and uh, anyway to make a long story short if i was in high school and if i had the notion that that I was just going to be a woodworker all my life and and do the four-year woodworking program in high school and go out of high school and not go to college and just be a woodworker and and if, as if that was just going to uh, do everything that I need in my career I mean I, I would be I'd be in a world of hurt I mean I'm just going to tell you it wouldn't work it just wouldn't work and uh, I know it wouldn't work and and uh, I know, though, when I was in high school, there was one store, and it was a big store, and they had a lot of used furniture, and it was really, really nice hardwood used furniture that had been restored. It was antique furniture, and and that's where if I would have worked there or something, maybe done some sanding and, and refinishing and that kind of thing, that it could have maybe given me an entry into the field of woodworking professionally. and. And then maybe I could have gone from there to uh, maybe maybe a, some other place that, that did refinishing and and uh, that sort of thing, restoration of old pieces. But the point I'm trying to get at here and and talk about is that when you're a young person and you find that the economy's changing and it's changing rapidly and and you don't know. What, what the goal is or what the goal should be. You, you don't have any kind of direction sometimes because you don't know and, and we don't know how how the economy is going to go in the future. I mean, there are resources you can look at. I mean, you can look at economic resources that kind of give projections on, on uh, labor markets for different fields and that kind of thing and what the projected uh, uh, you know, uh, increase might be in, in different fields, like to be a librarian or something like that. But even that, that's not going to really tell you everything you need to know. You might not know 
uh, how many librarians are all studying or how many people are studying to be librarians all for the same positions. I mean, and there can be things happen where, where for one reason or another, maybe the government uh, cuts funds and there's, there's half as many librarians. I mean, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. And so, like, this is stuff that we, we have to take into account. But what we can do is we can be still and, and uh, you know, know that he is the Lord. I mean, uh, another thing to consider here is uh, when meditating on that, I mean, it's possible that, that God can reveal his, his plan for your life. I mean, and you can know what you're supposed to do. And, and sometimes, uh, sometimes when, you, when you look at a job, I mean, you know, you know that that job's for you and you're the one to do it. You know, you know you're going to get hired for it because it's, it's the job for you. And you just know. And, and, you know, maybe even before you apply, you know you're going to have that job. And uh, sometimes that's how it can be. I mean, uh, I know that... Uh, I know that some people, when they're when they're young, you know, they want to they want to do something, something real impressive with their life. They they want to have, they want to have a nice family. They want to have you know nice, uh, nice, um, uh, nice community that uh, where they love and care for the people, and the people love and care for them, and 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 they want to do something that people really care about and where it really matters to people and um, but maybe they don't know what that is you know maybe they want to have some kind of so-called success like that and that might not be a bad thing sometimes and so the question they may have is you know how do they go from from some vision like that to actually actually taking hold of it well I mean you know, we go back to this whole idea of sowing and reaping. I mean, you know, what you sow, so too shall you reap. And so you want to you want to sow diligently. I mean, you want to sow good seed. You want to be you want to be maybe taking taking the best classes, maybe even at the best schools and and um, you know, get in the best situation you can to, to have have the best outcome. But even that, even that might not do it because, you know, you might just find yourself in a mountain of debt and, and not be able to have a job sometimes because, you know, sometimes what happens is, is the market just disappears. I know that uh, when I was going to Sauk Valley Community College years ago, I was studying... Uh, computer programming and that was that was a huge huge emphasis for me I mean I just I just really really cared about doing computer programming as as like a profession but that's that's what you know I, I wanted to learn all I could about computer programming I did and I really focused on it and I emphasized it you know and I just I remember I, I had books that I would get for free even, and, and there would be books that the instructors would be throwing away and I'd take them home and I would, I would read them and I'd read them and when I'd be waiting in a vehicle because my mother didn't drive and I drove and I drove her everywhere and I'd have to wait places and, and I'd be pulling out books and I'd be, I'd be reading about, you know, not just computer programming, but I'd be reading about all kinds of technical things and and I was just doing that all the time and, and, and for like a couple years and, and whatnot. But then there was a situation that occurred where, where like all the, all the computer programming and languages like C++ that big companies did, it all, it all, uh, it all went overseas and it all pretty much went to India because, uh, companies found that instead of paying $100 an hour for computer programmers, they could pay just 10 and and get by with it. And so they did. And 
as a result like companies they they paid ten dollars an hour instead of a hundred and and then what happened there with the computer programming as an industry in the united states is a so-called industry is that uh, it just kind of all dried up so to speak there were still places that did programming for companies like you know airlines use COBOL and and uh, I'm sure there are manufacturers around and stuff like that and people that have uh, different old uh, information systems that use things like COBOL and and uh, you know there were a lot of things like that that were I guess you call legacy systems that were maybe originally designed in the 50s or something or or some some decades way way long past and and some of those were still around but some of that stuff i mean like with the manufacturing and everything it was heading out to other countries and and so you know people around here they they didn't really keep using a lot of those old systems and because the companies you know they went elsewhere and and so basically to make a long story short like more than i'd say about 20 years later over 20 years later today if i look into the uh, surrounding community and 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 i you know look around for computer programming jobs i mean i'm not going to find any i'm just going to tell you what i remember like you can't see this but where this camera's pointed uh, just right behind the bridge there that's what the lights are is there a bridge just behind the bridge there's a, a building it's called national manufacturing and uh, when i was in high school i went there for job shadowing and uh you know i i job shadowed a computer programmer at national manufacturing there, there was a whole floor of computer programmers and they've been programming there i'm sure for maybe a couple decades or so there were computer programmers on one giant floor and uh there was also a system analyst and a few other people and and uh you know i had job shadowing there and i was told you know you you get your you know degree and, and get your qualifications come back here and you make 35 grand a year and this was like this was like 20 years ago or so i mean this was a long time ago and it was it was considered to be a whole lot of money back then you know like minimum wage i think was 425 an hour i mean it was it was a big deal and like i say you know there's still computer programming out there you know there are still companies that that write programs uh uh you know you can you can maybe write write apps and stuff like that right do programming for apps and and all kinds of things um you know maybe maybe sell little programs online or god knows what there's still programming out there but it's not like it used to be at least not around town where i live and so like that's where like i say you know even computer programming you know, I, I get into that and, and it just kind of, it, it's as if it just dries up, you know, and so to speak. And, and uh, so when you're young and you're trying to, you're trying to imagine how your future is going to go, I mean, like, you don't know, you don't know how it's going to go. And, and, uh, you know, you really have to, and I was an atheist when I was younger. I'm just going to tell you what. Um, you know, I went to a place that, that, you know, people called a church and they didn't quite believe in the right things and I didn't quite fully realize that at the time and, and, um, you know, and, and, I mean, I was baptized at a late age, so, uh, I was in my 20s when I was baptized there and, and, uh, but anyway, going back to the whole going back to the whole careers and vocations here and whatnot really I mean if you diligently work on things that can be your best bet to have success I mean that and specifically grace I mean you really need grace 
more so than maybe diligent working on things. But it's hard for somebody that diligently works on things to, to not succeed at some point. You know, especially if you try and try and try until you succeed, then, you know, eventually you succeed at something. So working diligent is important. Um, you know, relying on grace, I mean, that can be important too, but, you know, more so after you've diligently worked on things. And, and that's when there's there's time for grace, when, when you've done everything you can. And, uh, but... There's also the factor that that good things come to people that, uh, as I've been told, are good people. I mean, so to speak. There's a there's a phrase. There was a district manager, and that's basically what he said. He said, you know, good things happen for good people, and and uh, the implication there was that you know if you're if you're a, considered a good person good things are going to happen for you. Now, the world might consider people good with one standard. Churches consider people good with another. I mean, so you have to take that into consideration that in businesses and whatnot, you know, good things happen for what they consider good people. So, you know, if a business considers you a good person, then, then you might have more opportunities than somebody they might not consider a good person that's just how it is and so that's where like you know knowing people and taking taking care to, to listen to people and and you know being friendly and that kind of thing it can really go a long way you know having a network of, of professional connections and 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 that sort of thing where where you you have you have uh, you know friends and whatnot that that uh, when when you do need a job or when you do need you do need something you're able to kind of draw on on um, you're able to draw on a network of people and, and uh, that can help a lot I'm just going to tell you it can help a lot now when you're young one of the things that you look at in terms of careers and vocations and stuff is you kind of want to be, you might kind of want to be looking to see how, you know, who you want to be like sort of thing. You know, because a lot of times people when they're young, they don't know, like, they don't really know how, how to be as a person. You know, how to, how to develop into a role in society and, and, and how to, you know, they don't know if they want a beard, they don't know if they want you know, long hair, short hair, you know, they don't know if they want to dress conservatively or if they want to just, you know, wear a t-shirt and, and blue jeans. You know, they don't know sometimes uh, what they want until they get up to a certain age and then, and then their ways are kind of set. And so, like, younger people, a lot of times, you know, sometimes you might not know if you're a young person might not know what you want to be like when you're young when you get older you know and and uh, you know you don't know like do you want a, a big house or a small house or or do you want do you want to have a farm do you want to live in the city uh, do you want to live in an RV I mean and, and those are all a lot of uh, questions that kind of emerge now sometimes and a lot of times you might not have to really answer all those questions because you can get into a situation where like you find somebody that you love and, and then you marry them and and things just kind of work out where where you know you find that everything is just perfect I mean you find that that whether it's a question of living in the country or the city or whatever it it, it just kind of becomes it becomes an issue of not what you want but what what you too want you know what what we as it were want you know and, and not and not 
one or the other. It becomes a question of, of what the two together want. And, and so that's where it, it can become a matter of discussion, you know, and, you know, the wife says to the husband, what do we want, you know, and, or the husband says to the wife, what do we want? And so then there's discussion about maybe the, the benefits of living in the city versus the benefits of living in the country, you know, and, and how it would be for, for traveling, commuting to, to work and that kind of thing. And, and, you know, discussion about which one's more important, this or that, you know, and, and so like, that's where, uh, that's where there's, there can be a, a mutual understanding that develops. And that's where maybe sometimes if you're younger, you don't have to, you don't have to have sometimes a big vision of, of that you're going to live in the country or that you're going to live in the woods or that you're going to live in an RV or that you're going to live in the city or you're going to live in New York City or you're going to this or that or, or whatever. Sometimes it doesn't matter. It, you know, it depends. It depends. Sometimes it does matter if you're the one that is going to be making all those decisions. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe you, you know, your whole vision is to live in New York City, so you're going to have to move to New York City. And then you move to New York City and you find somebody. And then, and then basically, you know, you know how things go from there. And, and uh, I don't know. I don't know. It, a lot of times, the other thing to consider, too, is that God places us uh, pretty much where he wants us. You know, we we um, we get placed in, in the places where we're at, and it's according to his will. And, and uh, you know, we might not always know the reason why why we're, we are where we are, but that's where we are. And, and so, you know, that's where we serve God a lot of times. And, and uh, but because people have the opportunity in this country, in the United States, to look at uh, degrees and and consider uh, you know careers, to consider to s consider uh, paths in education, and 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 then to look at uh, vocations and that kind of thing, because people people have have the uh, ability to, to do that in, the, in this country and and it's not just determined by the career of one's parents it's, it's determined by by uh, more some sometimes more of what you know what a person can can guide themselves through uh, I mean there can be plenty of opportunities and, and some of it can be a matter of just of just uh, doing some research even you know if if you find that you're really good at mathematics I mean you know maybe maybe you can be an engineer uh, like a nuclear engineer or a mechanical engineer or or maybe you can be a statistician uh, you know work at uh, doing uh, risk analysis and stuff like that for a insurance company uh, you know if you're good at uh, math and, and maybe you can do statistics for business and social science and you can work at a firm maybe and 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 do do their uh, uh reports there when they have need statistical reports on on uh, how their business is operating uh, so that you can show those reports to management and, and the people in charge of the of the organization so that they can have a general idea how the company's doing and, and um, you know, have certain factors been up or are they down or you know how, how are critical success factors and maybe there's some statistics to kind of back up you know how things are going and stuff and, and uh, various other measures and stuff and, and so I mean there's there's a lot of use in mathematics you know, normally when you get into business and and uh, you get into communicating reports, then then there's a need for for good writing. So there's there's mathematics, there's good writing. So when you're young and you don't know what 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 your what the plan is for your life, generally that's where where people say, okay, well we know that you're going to need math, we know that you're going to need English. 
even the degree programs, you know, say that, that you need math and English. And so they're going to say, that's what you need to focus on. They're going to say, also oh, two general education requirements. You're going to, they're going to say social science and they're going to say that you need to have so many humanities. And, and uh, that's usually what colleges do. They, they focus on some of those, some of those, uh, key things and, and then they're they're going to ask you okay what do you want to do and then you'll be like I don't know and, and so that's when people a lot of times they change their majors a lot and they, they think oh you know I want to do this or I want to do that and, and um, I'll tell you sometimes people they find they want to get into criminal justice and, and so they because they want to be a policeman or they want to be they want to go into uh, becoming becoming some sort of uh, some sort of prison warden or they want to do become a corrections officer or anything like that that's where you know you go and you get a degree in criminal justice and and uh, you know you can do some of that stuff and and uh, you know, if you don't have a degree for your degree it's, it's a lot harder to get into some of those places and and uh, there are cities I, I know oh, that they hire policemen that that only have a high school diploma and, and don't require college and, but anyway a lot of this depends on it depends on what what you find that that is really important in your life and uh, there's the be still and know that I am the Lord you know we're meditating on on you know God and his his being there basically uh, meditating upon who God is even uh, you know and, and maybe just simply meditating on God I mean it can it can make a difference And so, I guess to make a long story short, there, there's a lot, there's a lot that can be said about this. I know too that we can't always predict the future. I mean, we don't know, we don't know what's going to happen. Just like, just to give an example, with the uh, Great Recession there. Now that is something that when that, before that happened, I basically found that it was going to happen. I mean, it was, it was almost, I believe it was a revelation even that it, that there was going to be some bad times and it was during really good times. And, and I remember I told my economics professor, I, I said, you know, mentioned there was going to be bad times. And he thought, he kind of thought I was crazy. And, uh, or he's like, where are you getting this from? And, and um, within a few weeks, I would say, or within a, I don't even know if it was that, it was kind of a short amount of time. It was, it was a matter of, of I want to say weeks, that uh, there were signs that, that would indicate that there's going to be some real bad things. There's going to be some real bad things happen. And... Uh, had to do with uh, the banking system and, and uh, some problems that uh, were, were occurring there. And, and needless to say, it, it didn't take a long time before before we had a, a real bad recession. And uh, you know, I know that uh, I had graduated from from getting my bachelor's degrees there and, and you know I, I knew that bad things were going to happen and uh, I still had to get a job somewhere and I worked at a home improvement store which you know they were the ones that, that offered me a job so that's where I worked and I think I even said bad things were going to happen and, and they're like oh you know the store is even does even better in a recession and, and those kind of things and it just wasn't true um, the, the store did so badly that 
that there were times when when nobody in the whole store was able to go to work I mean except for maybe two people because the, the sales from the store couldn't support all the workers and uh, there must have been like 60 80 workers I mean at least that uh, the store had and, and they just couldn't support everybody because there just wasn't enough customers there weren't, wasn't enough sales and I mean it was it was real real bad and uh, especially in the winter time you had the the great recession plus plus the the bad winter and and uh, winter and it just kind of it made things to the point where a store that that would normally have around a hundred workers or somewhere close to it I mean sometimes they might just have one or two or workers working at the whole store and and uh, everybody else would have to be sent home and, and there might not be a customer in the entire store it might just be one customer that comes in to the entire store for that day I mean that's bad that's real bad when it's like that and uh, I mean it's real sad too but that's what happened and so when you get in those situations I mean you want to you want to make you want to make uh, some as you know really good decisions if you can i mean you, you know you want to you want to do your best and uh, it's easy to get into a situation where where the economy changes and and then you basically take the brunt of the losses I mean one way or another and, and that's what you don't want to do if you can help it I mean um, I mean I hate to say it that way but uh, I know that uh, I know that with the with the shutdowns the COVID-19 shutdowns I mean that is really impacted uh, me as an example I was being considered for a district management position and then all of a sudden I was driving 60,000 miles a year and, and then all of a sudden that just it just all basically got torn to shreds I mean all of a sudden there were there were rules that prevented people from from crossing state borders in places and and so I mean long distance travel that was not something that was popular for businesses to do unless they were doing trucking or something like that that's people just didn't do long distance travel and that's what I made most of my money on or a lot of my money is is going going to far away stores and, and taking care of things and and for the company and and you know, doing a good job doing special special promotions in stores and in faraway places and i mean it just all just all sort of went up in smoke so to speak and i mean so when you're young and you look at jobs and and whatnot i mean these are the things these are the things that that we you know from life experience i mean that we have to talk about um people that are older and and uh, you know there is a sense in which with the old phrase be still and know that i am the lord i mean that confidence that that god is and he's in control and you know that uh that basically God governs, the Lord governs the entire universe. That concept in itself, it, it, makes, it makes a person at peace, at peace with, with whatever happens. You know, that, that when you know that whatever happens is God's will, I mean, to be at peace with that. And uh, 
you know, be, be at peace with, with the fact that God is in control. Um, it doesn't mean that, that you're always going to have uh, nice things because you may not always have nice things. But to be at peace with the fact that God is in control, um, it, it matters. And so, you know, there's a sense in which, too, that uh, ideally, you know, we, we should do whatever our hand comes to to do. I mean, so instead of really, like, thinking about it sometimes, I mean, when there's a need, we go out and, and fulfill that need, you know, and just like... Uh, just like if if your if your parents or your, your grandparents they need something you know you go out and you fulfill that need and depending upon what that need is and, and depending upon how you fulfill that need it can it can kind of give some insights into into how how things might be in in your vocation you know how things might be uh, as as a career for you, um, I mean, it can give some insight. Some people, you know, when when everybody's hungry in the house, they some people cook, you know, and and then when they get older in life, they find themselves not just cooking for a family, but they find themselves like cooking in a restaurant. I mean, you know, some people. They, they find themselves giving counsel. I mean, and maybe they become a counselor of some sort. Maybe they, they become a school teacher. You know, maybe they, they uh, do something else like that. You know, sometimes, uh, sometimes there's maybe a lot of travel needed and, and uh, you know, you find yourself driving places for the family or something like that. And, and then you look at, uh, you know, careers in driving and, and whatnot. And, and uh, sometimes if you if you go to a local church there and and it's a big church and, and they have needs and and you know you you do some volunteer work and stuff and and you help out with the church then I mean you find you kind of get a sense of of what you can do and and you're able to fill needs and and then based upon that it, it it helps out and you knowing what you can do like for others and and then you're able to kind of go from there i know that uh, i know that i've gone to school for 20 years and and uh, so in me talking about this and, and giving all these ideas and whatnot I have a master's degree of business administration in leadership, and I have I've got 69 doctorate credit hours toward a doctorate degree of business business administration, with an emphasis in management. And so, like this kind of thing, and and creating ideas, and and looking at sensibility of things, and and that kind of thing. I mean, this is not outside of not not outside of my education it, believe it or not it is it is it is within the realm a little bit within the realm especially with my master's degree in divinity and everything else it's, it's pretty much within the realm of uh, of my formal education it's it's not what i learned in school but you know it's it's sort of within the realm of things it's not like it's not like I went to school and, and studied like physics or something and here I am talking to you about all this stuff. That's, that's not the case. I mean, it's, it's that it's within my field of expertise, I guess you could say. Uh, it's just different, different material than what you would see in school. Uh, but anyway, one of the things that um, one of the things I have to say about that is that 
you know, there, there can be a need even for people that, um, that evaluate businesses and, and look at the sensibility of business plans and, and you know, look at, um, look at the strength and, of critical success factors and that kind of thing and, and try to understand uh, how to make businesses more efficient and, and how, to, uh, how to make businesses produce a better quality product or or uh, you know how to how to make businesses more profitable, uh, more lucrative. I mean, you know, there there's a place for that, and you know it, it depends it depends on on you know on what what God has for your life too. And I'll tell you what, businesses. It's not always the case that that cutting labor cost is is the uh, answer for for businesses doing better as a business uh, financially that's not always cutting labor costs is not always how how things make how it's not always how to make businesses uh, run better you know, it, it doesn't always doesn't always do good things for businesses and uh, but yet there are a lot of firms that that because that's the only factor of production that they can control sometimes you know, that's the one they try to they try to reduce the cost of is, is labor uh, sometimes aggressively and, and so that's where uh, that's where it can be kind of a bad thing to, to get into some of those places if you can try to avoid it sometimes you're better um, depends on depends on uh, I guess it depends on things but anyway I guess you you should be able to see in all this and and uh, you know, a little bit of a little bit of an idea of how things go and and uh, you know, I'll tell you I'll tell you that you don't always want to be an older person that's maybe 40 or 50 years old and and then looking at your career and being like you know what like I'm just kind of here and and the ladder just kind of got um, just kind of got collapsed from under me and and you know, I'm holding on to the roof or whatever and of the house or whatever and and I, I can't really go up and I can't really go down and, and I'm just kind of, you know, stuck. And you don't want to be like that if you can help it. I mean, because that's, that's kind of bad. You know, it's kind of bad to not be able to really go either way and 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 just just be kind of stuck. And, and that can happen because one of the things to consider here is that even with your even with your uh, politicians and, and everybody else that, that makes decisions for education. I mean, sometimes none of those people, they really know what the future is going to look like. And so, like degree programs and things like that, I mean, the schools may have the best of intentions and, and they may really think that that things are going to work out, so to speak, and, and to find out, so to speak, that that the programs that are offered are just not are just not something that people could get jobs with. I mean, that that you get a degree in 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 the field that you studied in, and and maybe you could just never get a job in anything that relates to that degree. I mean. Um, Sometimes that, that can happen because because the markets change and and you know some things go overseas and I mean that's just that's just how things work. I mean you don't know and uh, I mean it it's uh, just going back to the the scripture there. Uh, you know, sow your seed in the morning and in the evening don't let your hand be idle because you don't know what's going to succeed, either this or that. 
maybe they'll both equally succeed. You don't know. And uh, that's where, too, having having a, a variety of things that you're you're good at, and and just being being able to focus on on being good at things and and succeeding at things, it can it can make a big difference. You know, whatever your hand comes to, that's that's what you want to. If you can, do with all your might, you know, and and um, do it until it's done. Do it until it's a, the best quality it can be that you can produce, and and then it's done. It's the best quality you can do, and and then you move on from there. And uh, I'll tell you, I mean, there there are a lot of changes that happen in the world, and and. Uh, it's hard it's hard to know it's hard to know if you're going to be rich or if you're going to be poor I mean, it's hard to know sometimes and, but some of this being rich or poor just to just to elaborate on that some of that has to do with people's spending patterns you know if, if you're rich maybe it's because you have savings and and then when when bad things happen, you're able to cover the expense of those bad things because you got savings to cover it. Or you have investments, more likely investments than savings, and, and you know how to invest. And then when you invest, you do it wisely, and, and then you have returns. And, and then as a result, through savings and investments, you're able to have, have more than what you had before, and, and you're able to go from there. And... Uh, that's where it, it makes a big difference, uh, knowing how to save and invest. And then sometimes the people that are poor, it's it's not because they're lazy per se. Sometimes it's because they either don't know how to invest wisely, or maybe they don't they don't save their money, or maybe maybe they get into a rut where where their jobs and, 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 and their economic uh, position is, is so low that they can never get out of it and, and they really don't have much anyway and, and um, you know, maybe, maybe they just can't, they can never, they can never uh, progress out of that. I mean, and sometimes people that when they are uh, really poor, they, they might they might look at um, having a house as an investment. You know, the idea that that their house is going to build value over time, and they're going to be able to maybe have a, a have the ability to to pay for it in full someday, hopefully, and and um, and then sell it and you know, move somewhere else. And and uh, sometimes that's how things go. And, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it, it just, it, it really is a lot of this stuff, a lot of this stuff, it's, it's up to you, uh, how you, how you, uh, how you, you live your life. I mean, that's just what it comes down to. But, um, I'll tell you what, investments are the type of thing that that if you if you're not wise at investments you can lose everything you have and, and because of that that's where a lot of people you know if they don't know they don't try and and i understand that too i mean it's uh very understandable that um, that's how that's how investment goes i mean if you don't know it's it's better not to try i guess uh, and I mean so anyway that's basically uh, basically the reflection there for today so to make a, a long story short instead of being worried about all these things instead of thinking you know this or that for careers and everything else and uh, how the plan is for a person's life. It's better just to be still and know that I am the Lord. 
you know, as the scripture says, uh, and, and meditate upon upon that verse and and uh, just just have confidence in God's will and and uh, you know, maybe hope and pray that that uh, the contributions you make glorify God. Um, being able to partake of the Eucharist and making intercession for others and and those sorts of things very important very important and uh, you can even pray that God leads you into all manner of righteousness and salvation delivers you from evil that his kingdom come his will be done on earth as is in heaven he gives his gives you your daily bread uh, that you forgive your you know forgive uh, forgive you of your sins and trespasses you, you forgive those that sin against you and uh, that he suffered you not to be led into temptation but delivered from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen so anyway god be blessed god be praised and god love you and keep you forever bye for now